hit that subscribe button and the bell icon beside it to check out our latest videos before anyone else. Hi there guys, I'm Nikhil from Greedy Tech and these are the best features of the Oppo F5. First and the most noticeable feature about this phone is its display. It has a 6 inch LTPS display with Full HD plus resolution in 18 to 9 aspect ratio. 6 inches might seem a big number but because of the smaller bezels, it fits comfortably in the hand. It has good contrast and deeper blacks and you also get rounded corners which is pretty rare to see. This is a retail phone and comparatively, Vivo V7 and V7 Plus are offering just HD plus resolution while this phone is offering Full HD plus resolution. Even the brightness levels are pretty good. Now the next best thing about this phone is the selfie camera. This phone comes with a 20 megapixel camera with f2.0 aperture. Unlike other Oppo phones, this phone uses the display as a flash and does a pretty good job at taking selfies. It also comes with an AI assisted beauty recognition technology that takes better selfies. Next we have portrait selfies. This phone only has a single camera on the front but uses some software processing just like the Pixel phones to offer portrait selfies. Here are some sample shots. Obviously it's not perfect but does a pretty good job. Next best feature about this phone is the performance. This phone supports a MediaTek Helios P23 processor with Mali G71 MP2 GPU. It's a processor built using the 16 nanometer architecture so it is power efficient too. Obviously there are phones that are priced way less than this phone and offer way better performance but as I've said earlier this is a retail phone and when we compare it to the previous Oppo phones like the Oppo F3 or the current Vivo V7 and the V7 Plus, this phone definitely offers better performance, better gaming experience and better battery life. Next best feature on this phone is the dedicated SD card slot. Well that's definitely not a big thing, but a dedicated SD card slot always means more space for all your entertainment needs. Next we have face unlock. After iPhone 10, all the brands have been striving to provide face unlock feature and face unlock on Oppo is definitely one of the best out there. In fact, in my testing, I found it to be as fast and as good as OnePlus 5T. Registering your face is pretty simple and it unlocks your phone insanely fast. Every time I press the power button, I'm really shocked to see how the phone unlocks. In good lighting conditions, it takes around 300 milliseconds and in dark environments, it takes around 800 milliseconds. Well, that's according to the manufacturer. In my personal usage, as I've said, it was super fast. Now that's not all. We can also use this face unlock feature to unlock locked applications and the file save, which I'll talk about next. Next it has app lock. This phone comes with an app lock built into the system. That just means it's more secure than the regular third party applications you might install. And unlike any other phones, we can unlock locked applications using a fingerprint scanner and even the face unlock feature, which is again super fast. Next we have file save, which is like a gallery vault or a vault to hide files like videos, images, documents, which you don't want others to see. It comes with password protection and you can also choose to unlock it using the fingerprint scanner and face unlock feature. Next we have SMS and call block feature which on this phone is called anti-harassment and it offers very unique features like for call blocks, block hidden incoming calls, block all unknown numbers and do not block repeated incoming calls which is something other brands rarely offer. In SMS blocking settings, we can block messages based on keywords or even block all the unknown numbers. Next we have Kidspace which is like a launcher with very limited features. Let's say you give your phone to your kid to play a game or so. He might end up calling someone, deleting messages, doing all kinds of crazy stuff. But once you enter this mode, you can restrict system modifications, restrict the user to use only limited number of applications and even restrict user to use the phone only for a specific amount of time. It even blocks apps and games from sending messages and accessing internet. Next we have energy saver. It just gives you the option to freeze application, close applications from running in the background and the dose feature. Normally apps like Facebook always keep running in the background and drain battery. So you can optimize such apps using this feature to get better battery life. If you don't know how to use this feature, simply enable dose for all the apps that are draining battery on your phone. Next we can tweak the navigation bar. Well this is something we don't find in pure stock Android phones, but on this phone, like other Chinese phones, we can tweak the navigation bar. We can simply replace the back and recent apps button and even hide the navigation bar altogether to have a more immersive experience. Next we have navigation gestures. Once you enable it, navigation bar is hidden and you can use some gestures. Like you can swipe from the left side to access control center or the notification toggles, swipe from the right side to go back and swipe from the center and hold for a second to open recent apps. I personally like this navigation gestures a lot. 
you can still move around with a more immersive experience of the phone. Next we have clone apps. Using this feature, we can use two instances of the same application on the same phone. Like we can have two WhatsApp accounts on the same phone. This feature is really awesome. But unfortunately on this phone, this feature is limited to only very few applications like WhatsApp, Line, Blackberry Messenger and some other applications. Next we have some screen of gestures like double tap to wake and double tap to sleep. Once you enable this feature, simply double tap your phone when your phone is sleeping and it will wake up the phone. Next we can also draw characters on the screen to do specific tasks. Like we can draw an O to start the camera application. We can draw a V to toggle the torch. We can also draw two lines vertically to play or pause music. Draw a less than or greater than sign for next and previous songs. We can also add new gestures like we can draw a W for WhatsApp and use other characters as well. Next we have some smart calling features which I would recommend you to check them out yourself. It has features like auto answer, switch from speaker to calls and flip to mute which are all pretty handy if you know how to use them. Next we have gesture screenshot. Once you enable this toggle, you can swipe down using three fingers to take a screenshot. It is as simple as that. We can also use the hardware keys to take the screenshot. Just press the volume down and power button both at the same time to take a screenshot. Next we have touch disable mode, which is also called pocket mode on other phones, which prevents accidental touches when your phone is in your pocket. Next we have split screen mode. After Nougat, almost all the phones have this feature called split screen mode where we can run two applications at the same time. But sadly on this phone, only few applications support this feature. To enable this mode, just open an application like WhatsApp or the Google Play Store, press and hold the recent apps button and it will open it in a split screen view. You can select the secondary application from the recent apps menu. Most of the apps are not supported, just very few apps are supported as of now. Next we have a separate application called Phone Manager which offers us some extra options like app encryption where we can lock applications. We can clear the RAM, do a virus scan and even clean files on WhatsApp. In privacy and permission settings, we have Startup Manager where we can restrict apps from starting in the background and even on boot. Usually apps like Facebook, Instagram and Twitter keep restarting in the background and if you disable these toggles for those applications, you can further improve the battery life. Next we have Game Acceleration with lot of interesting features like Graphic Acceleration which improves the graphic performance. Next we have Multi-Touch Prevention which simply disables the navigation buttons in landscape mode it also has do not disturb mode to prevent calls from interrupting your gaming experience and also prevents auto brightness while you are gaming. Once again, I have probably never seen these features on other phones. Next we have timing power on and off, which is also called as schedule power on and power off on other phones. Using this feature, we can automatically power on and off our phones at a specific time. I personally never use this feature. Do let me know if you ever had to use it. So guys, those were the best features of the Oppo F5. Now let's look at some important tips and tricks. So while you're watching video on YouTube, you'll see these two black bars on the corners. And if you want to go full screen, all you need to do is a pinch out gesture like this and you'll get a full screen. This feature is also available on all the phones with the new 18 to 9 aspect ratio. You just need to have the latest YouTube app. Next, I'll show you how to change the default home launcher or the default browser on your phone. For that, go to settings and then select app management and click this default app management at the bottom. Now from here we can change the default home launcher, messaging app, calls, browser and so on. If you have any additional launcher like a Nova launcher installed, it will get listed over here and you can select that. To change the default gallery app, go to photos and select photos. Now Google photos will be your default gallery app. Similarly we can do even with the browser and it is as simple as that. Next we have Oppo Share. You can access it from the notification area or the notification toggles or the control center. Simply click over here to start Oppo Share. This is just like Share It where we can share files over Wi-Fi. But this particular Oppo Share feature works only with Oppo phones. So if you have two Oppo phones, just enable Oppo Share on both the phones and then select the file that you want to share. In my case, I'm gonna share this image. Now once you click Share, you'll get the other device listed over here and you can share that file over Wi-Fi. So that's super convenient. Next we have Night Shield Mode. Once again, we can access it from the notification toggles. We can simply click over here to enable the night mode or else we can come to the display settings. Over here we have the night shield. So once you enable it, it puts a warm tint on the screen. We can even make it cooler using the slider, but usually it's better to go with the warmer tint. By using a warmer tint, we can filter blue light, which is supposed to help us sleep better at night. We can also schedule it using these settings and we also have a comfortable nighttime reading mode. 
but this is what happens. I'm just gonna increase the brightness. So it's barely visible and the brightness is super low. So it's much more comfortable to use at night. So guys, those were the best features and tips and tricks of Oppo F5. I hope I didn't miss out on anything. If I did, do let me know by commenting below this video. If you're planning to buy this phone, use the link in the description. It really helps the channel. If you want us to make any specific video, tweet out to us with the hashtag AskGreedyTech on Twitter and we will try to make it as soon as possible. If you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe to our channel to see more cool videos on tech. I'm Nikhil from GreedyTech signing off. Have a nice day.